Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I wanted to share with you a poster on Radiation Watch on Facebook. Put together this schematic uh, for the people that are monitoring uh, Geiger counter readings. And this gentleman lives in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, he's several different Geiger counters, and he's been doing a survey of the Olympic Peninsula and putting it together in a map for us. But um, his interest has been in the storm generation that comes out of this area of the ocean. On this particular day, uh, this was back on the 27th of December, and um, there were some, some high readings that were reported um, around the 25th of December in the Seattle area. And this is a map of where this radioactive slick is now located off the coast of Japan. Now, here's Japan, here's Tokyo. So if you did an overlay, this slick would be encompassing approximately this area. And this is where the storms were um, being generated from. And, and as you know, if you've watched the radiation forecast from today, the Pacific Northwest is really getting hit right now. And the jet stream is going to be moving slightly north. So it'll be encompassing part of British Columbia as well and then on to Alberta, Edmonton, Calgary, and some of the northern states. However, um, you know, we've been focusing a lot on the releases that are coming from the reactors. There was a report today saying that the camera that they put into reactor two this morning uh, broke, and the cameras are supposed to be able to withstand up to a thousand sieverts. Um, you know, that uh, makes you wonder if the radiation was uh, too high for the equipment, which has been the case in the past. But in addition to the releases that are coming from not only Reactor 2, but uh, 1, 3, 4, 5, possibly uh, 6, possibly reactors that are having problems in Onagawa, and possibly reactors that are having problems in uh, Diani. You know, they're burning radioactive debris, plus we have this giant slick, which uh, researchers had estimated back in July would probably sink. And uh, I saw a report from uh, about three weeks ago saying that the cesium levels now are exactly the same as they were in July, so this does not seem to be sinking or dissipating as the researchers had thought that it might and you know because of bioaccumulation these these particles tend to stick together and right now they tend to be sticking on the surface and what happens in the water cycle and I found a, a short little um, movie on this on you but there's evaporation that turns into clouds um, these clouds are, are rolling around in a very dynamic part of our lower atmosphere called the troposphere and the wind is blowing these, these clouds and storms over to the west coast and, and on to other Europe where the radiation fallout is burning. And there are lots of researchers that are measuring this. You know, we're still in the early publication of data and so forth. Um, but uh, I, what I wanted to do, I, I asked this guy if I could um, put the, the picture up that, uh, that he had created. Try to get some other people's opinion on this because um, this is going to be a really big problem if this slick doesn't dissipate and storms continue to be generated out of this area of the Pacific Ocean. What's going to the readings that we're getting once this uh, once this slick is parked off the West Coast? Um, if it doesn't sink and it doesn't dissipate and we continually have uh, rain out that's occurring, um, this is just going to be spreading the ocean contamination into the air. And I, I have a, a short piece from an interview that was done by Arnie Gunderson on the 27th of December. I'll put a link to the full interview uh, underneath this video so you can listen to it. It's a little over an hour. It's with Helen Caldicott on If You Love This and it's very informative about the current releases that are occurring in the ocean uh, from Fukushima and they are ongoing and they will be ongoing um, basically forever at this point. Well they had a leak um, just this week on um, uh, in, in their uh, 
in the system that they use to purify the water. And approximately um, 45, uh, 45,000 pounds of radioactive water was released from the building and uh, got into the Pacific Ocean. And it was very high in strontium. Um, and strontium, of course, you'll remember is a bone seeker and, and uh, is, is one of the most nasty uh, chemicals that gets released from a nuclear reactor. So that was a surface leak. It, it ran out of the building, across the ground, and into the ocean. Oh, really? Don't... Yeah. That, that, but in addition, there's cracks in the concrete from the earthquake. You've got to remember, this site moved. Right. The entire land dropped, and when something you know that big moves, it's got a crack. So mm. there's cracks in the uh, in the containment. There's cracks in the turbine building, mm. and all of which is allowing groundwater in and radioactive water into the groundwater. So the site is becoming increasingly um, the groundwater under the site is becoming increasingly contaminated. And is the groundwater uh, seawater, is it salt water? It must be because it's built right next to the ocean, right? Uh, no, it's fresh water. Oh, it's fresh the, water. The, the flow is from the land into the ocean. Uh. It, it just turns out that way. So that um, there's fresh water under the site and the net flow on site is out to the ocean. Now, so we're seeing whatever radioactivity is in the groundwater is also moving into the ocean. So you know, as it's been said, I said it months ago, but other people have now said it too, that this is uh, the, the absolutely the largest, by at least a, a factor of 10, um, radioactive contamination of the ocean that's ever occurred in history. Well, how much do, have, has, do you estimate has been released into the Pacific Ocean in total from, from Fukushima Daiichi? Well, the, the number I saw was... Uh, 30 tetra becquerels, and that's that's 15 zeros. So put 30 with 15 zeros behind it, becquerels, and uh, that's what they believe was released into the ocean. A becquerel is a disintegration per second, but after that disintegrates, there's another one the next second, and another one the next second, and another one the next second for years. So we talk about, you know, this 30 with, with 15 zeros behind it. It's a million billion, 30 million billion um, disintegrations per second continuing over the next 30 years um, have been released into the ocean. Now, is that, is that again, a calculation and an estimate? Everything's an estimate. How do they, they, how do they yeah. work that out then? How do they work that? 30 million billion disintegrations per second and it's ongoing. I would love to hear um, what you guys think about this and I will also put a link to Radiation Watch on Facebook and uh, my other information page Radchick Radiation Research and Mitigation. Feel free to comment below. Thanks.